It's 12 noon in London, 7 a.m. in Philadelphia, and around the world, it's time for Live Aid. It was the first truly global concert with a TV audience of nearly one and a half billion people. When Live Aid went live on July the 13th, 1985, it was the most technically challenging broadcast ever attempted, but not everything went to plan. Eight hours into this 16 hour musical marathon, the screens went dead. The show had fallen off the air. At the time, the Who were on stage, but only the audience could see their performance. David Croft was one of the music directors working on the live broadcast. Live Aid grew like a snowball. The very first meeting I went to, there were five people there, but it just got bigger. The second meeting, there were 25 people. The third meeting, the room wasn't big enough to get everybody in. How did you prepare? We had to literally cobble together equipment. We only had eight cameras on the bands. Nowadays, you'd have about 35 or 40. I was absolutely thrilled to be doing David Bowie and The Who, because I'd always been a massive Who fan, and they hadn't played together for quite some time. So I thought, that in itself is going to be an event to, to, to direct them. Please welcome The Who! The Who took to the stage at 8 p.m., just after the first verse of My Generation, their first song of the set, something happened that caused the live television feed from the UK to be cut. Bang, all the screens in the truck go black. Suddenly an engineer runs into the scanner and is trying to turn off any circuits that they think we don't need. And in the truck, we had a little tiny fan that was that big and it was going around, and he'd turn that off as if that was going to make any difference. But they were, <laughs> they were desperately trying to reduce the power load. Power was eventually restored. After approximately five minutes, Live Aid returned to the global audience, bringing back The Who as they finished their second song, Pinball Wizard. For 35 years, everyone thought the missing five minutes of The Who's set had been lost forever. But then, earlier this year, a storage company made a curious discovery. 500 film canisters and separate audio tapes recorded at Live Aid by a documentary crew in the audience. In the old days, pictures and sound were recorded separately. So I was on a little machine watching the pictures, and occasionally I would have a break from the pictures, and I'd go to the, the quarter-inch audio tape. And so I got this, and suddenly the Who were playing, and I thought, oh, I know what's going to happen because this, the screens go blank. But it didn't, it carried on. So somebody's recorded the audio, and I knew that the sound recordist wouldn't have been recording anything that the camera wasn't looking at. Now it was left to Jill to marry the sound to the pictures. So you see there, the screens, they suddenly go blank. Oh, yeah, you can look, see it's lost. It's lost. I love the fact that we can see the BBC camera there and the guy is just standing there with nothing to do. He can't hear the director, he can't see anything, he's just standing there. Nowadays, of course, with everybody having mobile phones, it would be like somebody filming it on their phone from the middle of the crowd, but in those days, mobile phones hadn't even been invented. This is the only thing that's never been seen before. Never. Now, 35 years on from their incredible set, it's time to show a group of die-hard Who fans their complete performance. Ladies and gentlemen, it was a performance by one of the world's biggest bands on arguably the world's biggest stage, thought lost until now. Today, the Who's performance is no longer just a memory held in the minds of the lucky crowd. It completes the record of an historic moment in the history of popular music.